So let's keep keep working. Uh, next uh, tool I'm going to use is uh, a rule surface. It's a really advanced tool that allows us to create surface in one single step and many different options uh, available. In this particular case, I want to make sure that I uh, pick uh, taper to plane because I'm concerned about the angle at which that surface will come out. And designer is free to pick any extension. Uh, in this case, we want just 200 millimeters and obviously zero for angle. And in one single step, we create quite complex surface uh, guided by the edge of the previously designed surface. Really great productivity tool. Let's move on. Now we're going to utilize another tool, Contour Curve. It will allow us to actually trace geometry. For that, we're going to go into unshaded mode. And actually, using top or bottom artwork sketch, we're going to trace that sketch pretty precisely. And it will allow us to stay uh, focused on the artwork that was provided by designer. This curve, by the way, can be edited in the process of creation or after the fact. And now I can simply use that curve to trim the surface. So you can imagine the amount of work that would go into doing something like that without this functionality. Because that curve is mapped directly on that surface. So now we trimmed that uh, geometry and we're ready to connect those two surfaces together. Again, in one single step, I can utilize surface blend command that will allow me not only blend those surfaces together, but also in one step, join them together via surface blend. All we're doing is just selecting a couple surfaces and defining the direction, possible direction in which that uh, radius will go. And we have one single sheet body now where two surfaces join by uh, radii. So let's compare again our design against uh, the artwork. It seems like we're doing pretty good. Let's keep uh, working. Now I'm going to create a series of sketches for uh, section curves when I create next blue surf. Let's start with the first one on X, Z plane. And we can create analytical curve first. And if we need down the line, we can uh, switch always. We can switch this uh, curve to spline if we need to. For now, it will suffice. Let's go and create additional curve. Let's see how efficiently we can do that. The side artwork sketch will help us to place it correctly. So I can always reorient my design and take advantage of that side artwork sketch and position correctly. Another productivity boost is a pierce point. It will allow us to create curve without actually reoriented sketch. I And uh, I can be certain that that curve is actually attached to the our design sketch. Okay, and the last last sketch we're going to create at the end of our design. I don't even have to know how far I need to travel. Just select the point on the geometry. And this in this case we're going to mimic the shape of the mid sketch that we placed in the middle. And as I mentioned earlier, any of these analytical curves can be later converted into splines if we need to. It's a little bit high right now, uh, the position of that top point, so I need to adjust it maybe slightly. And you can see how switching between different views, I can easily manage how that uh, curve was created. Finally, we're ready to place a... Uh, another blue surf. But before we do that, we need to connect those 
points and it will give us another curve. Uh, in this case we're going to use key point curve to connect the ends of those section curves. So it provides not only excellent way of creating that extra curve in space in one single step, but at the same time we can trace the artwork, we can trace the outside edge of our boat and it will, will give us excellent curve for creating uh, the side of that hull, the top side. So let's select the end point of that section curve. Another very uh, strong productivity point I'd like to make is that once you orient it in, uh, in, in a specific way, you can edit that curve even in the process of creation or later and uh, those points that w I'm adjusting right now they always stay at the same elevation. Now when we switch to a uh, side view and turn on that artwork sketch again let's move this uh, out of the way. So now when we lock to this uh, side view I can uh, make sure that those points adjust it only in the side view not in 3D space. So it uh, provides really great way of editing 3D curve without actually locking to a plane, even though you can do that. Okay, let's go and create that side surface. Again, I'm utilizing Blue Surf, and uh, you'll notice how it takes shape as I start selecting the section curves. It's a great way to precisely shape up your design. So I select the mid surface, uh, mid curve, and the end curve, another end curve. Okay, so now that we created that side surface, let's go and utilize the same approach. We're going to use a surface blend to connect those two surfaces via a surface blend with it via radii. It's a, an excellent way of stitching together surfaces at the same time adding additional geometry. So it saves extra steps when you do that and uh, now we've, we're looking at the one single sheet body. Obviously we need to mirror this to stay symmetrical and in solid edge it's very easy to select the body to mirror plane and you will be pretty much done. And again the same approach surface blend we're gonna connect those two halves into one single body sheet body. All we have to do just define the location or direction for the round to go and we're pretty much done. So let's compare against our artwork. I would say we're in good shape, pretty close. Now I'm going to start closing the open surfaces, open areas to create a solid body. And I'd like to point out that as a result of applying all these radii, as you can see we have a little dip right there. And I want to avoid complications uh, later, so I want to cut away that portion. It will take only a small amount of uh, material to cut away. The very efficient way we can do this in Solid Edge is utilizing uh, Boolean command. And the Boolean command can be performed between not only sheet bodies or solid bodies, it can be performed on uh, planes as well. And it, it's really uh, making the tool powerful and efficient because as you can see I can subtract plane from uh, sheet body as I would do with the solid body. Okay, and now I'm going to use uh, another tool to close the end as I cut it away. I select all the edges and this tool which is called bounded surface will allow us to close that opening without even additional curve. Now I'm going to do the same on top and you'll see how quickly I can close that uh, quite complex shape uh, with a quite complex shape surface I can close the top opening 
And at the end, we have quite an interesting situation. We have a flat, flat uh, end of the uh, hull, and then the bottom is kind of angled. So we need to close that. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you how efficiently we can do the same uh, way as we did before with bounded surface. But before we do that, I'd like to place a single curve that will guide me, will serve me as a guide curve later. Conveniently, I can use key point curve to place that uh, in the 3D space. Again, I'm avoiding extra work creating sketch. And now with the bounded surface, I can select all the edges but that uh, single curve I just placed. And that curve I'm going to select as a guide curve. Conveniently, so that allows us to use that curve and uh, in the process of uh, bounded surface creation. So now that I closed all the openings in my design, I can stitch all those surfaces together and get a solid body out of it. It's quite easy in Solid Edge, just select all the surfaces and Solid Edge informs us that the solid body was created. The reason why I did all this because I wanted to use a thin wall command to hollow out our design. And uh, I'm pretty much done at this point. So let's turn on all the sketches, all the artwork and compare. Here's the front, here's the side, and here's the top, or I should say bottom of the hull. So you can see how quickly and efficiently I was able to design this hull, tracing the original artwork from a designer. So hopefully you can see the power of solid edge surfacing and the ability for the companies to use a one single process versus multiple tools when uh, bringing geometry from outside is required and that disrupts the flow within the design process. All of that can be eliminated by using solid edge.